Hey, so here we are. This is the first video cast I'm doing in this series. Um, if you happen to be finding this one, you're five years in the future, and this series has become really popular. I recommend skipping this one because this is the first one, and it's probably going to be pretty rough. I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to try and stumble through this. So you can, we're going to suffer through this one together, I guess. Uh, the plan with this series is to show you my picture taking process. Basically, go from uh, I go from nothing, starting out on a picture taking adventure, all the way uh, through taking the picture, and then and then uh, how I process them. I know it sounds like a lot. I'm not going to try to do it all in one video. I'm going to break it up and try to keep them short, like uh, 10 to 15 minutes a piece. Um, so I guess let's get started here with this first video. Uh, this trip, you see these photos here, this is a photo trip, I call it a photo trip, it's not a trip, uh, I took, dropped my daughter off at school, and uh, the sun was coming up, and we had some clouds in the sky, which is rare in Central California, so I'm like, eh, I better go try and get, take some pictures, so I got a chance here. I didn't have much time, because the sun was coming up fast, that's the way it always seems when you're taking pictures, that the sunrise seems to happen super fast. So I went out to a spot nearby in my neighborhood or on the edge of my neighborhood where I knew there's a hill and I scrambled up to the top of the hill and I brought my tripod, of course, because I can never decide whether I need it or not. And uh, hoofed it up to this hilltop, had to climb a, over a barbed wire fence. You know, it's kind of one of those deals where I was like, oh no, the sun's coming up. And if I only had one option to get a picture, or at least I thought, so I just kind of hurried up and got up to this hilltop. And when I came over the hilltop, this was the scene that was in front of me. You can see the peak of Mount Diablo. That's kind of this cool cloud coming over it. And you got the rolling hills leading up to it. Um, however, I couldn't find a good foreground subject. Like a landscape picture, you usually need something in the foreground and then something in the background. So I tried like maybe abstracting it here by putting this little band of sunlit grass on the hilltop in the picture. And then you get all these layers going back. And then a, a layer of sky was probably equal to this layer of grass in the bottom just to balance it out. It's kind of my one of my go-to little things I do. And I don't partic particularly like this picture it's okay it would do for a setting on a blog post or something but it's not like a, a huge winner of a picture and so I took this couldn't find a better composition with the mountain in the background so I started looking around to see if I could find something else the hill and I came across this thistle growing on the ground um, so it's got all this texture and stuff so I figured hey maybe I'll make a good picture see the first ones I tried here uh, Put some grass in the foreground so i was like well maybe if i uh put some grass in here you kind of get a feel for the area i also made sure i went with the hill in the background so you can see the landscape uh, what, what the areas looks like but mainly the folks on the thistle but that's like too much mess uh so i tried to simplify it down leaving some grass in but i don't like this one and i didn't when i took it even um, <laughs> uh uh it's just uh, it's kind of a mess. So anyways, I kind of I ended up simplifying it back and get the grass on the foreground, and there you go. So it's the picture I kind of went for. Um, get the thistle plant here, and with the hill in the background. And I also like to get these little bit of trees back here. I know they're really kind of uh, all blurred out in the distance, but uh, they I think they add nicely to the picture because you get like the three main thistles and the three trees here. So it kind of makes a balance. Anyhow, so if you look at my, the way I shoot these kind of things, when I find something I'll like, like this composition, I'm not going to take this one picture. I usually mess around with it and take a couple different pictures. So like, just to make sure I got the right thing when I get, when I get home, I'm happy with it. Like this one, I took at F10 because I wanted some depth of field, maybe get the grass in focus a little bit. And then uh, this one here, I believe there it is. I took this one at F5.0, this one. It's a lot less depth of field and things blur out and um kind of like the 5.0 one a couple through a couple more here's another one at f11 so you can tell the background's a little crunchier you can see a little more depth of field so um in the f11 all the thistles are in focus and the f5.01 we got uh just the front thistles in focus and then big 
these other ones are trying to blur out a little bit. You know what? I could be calling these thistles, or maybe they are not even thistles. I don't know. If, I think they're thistles, though. So I'm not from California originally, so if there's any botanists watching this, you want to correct me, leave a comment. Anyhow, so we'll work on, you know what? I like the, this one, I'm liking this one at F11 actually better today. I used to like the F5.0, but I like this F11. So uh, let me show you how I go ahead and work on work on the, this photo. Okay, this is this is where this turns into the anti-tutorial. Um, see, I hate Lightroom's brushes. I tried using them, and I practiced with them forced myself to use them and I, I just can't I don't like them so I don't like to do anything uh, really selective in Lightroom what I mean by selective is like oh I'm gonna do something here but not over here like uh, pretty much everything I do in Lightroom is global or nothing once in a while I'll bust up a brush if it's something really super basic like in this picture what I want to do is uh, I want to brighten up the shadow area on these thistles because I like the exposure for the most part everywhere in this picture and uh, there's a ton of contrast so it was a really tricky exposure to not get the sky to totally blow out or the shadows to plug up so I kind of stuck with these mucky looking thistle sh uh, shadows and that's kind of the main part of the picture and I want those to look right so uh, here's my trick with that I'll go down here right click on the image in the film strip and uh, create virtual copy and what that does is uh, it makes an exact copy of this picture so you can work on one and it doesn't affect the other um, now what I want to do with this one is I'm going to fix it up for just the fifth thistle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the exposure for that I'm like, don't care what happens over here, over there. I'm just looking at the main subject area, thistles. So whatever happens can happen. And uh, I did I just pop the exposure. I'm not going to turn this into some super long tutorial about how to fix the exposure or whatever. But uh, basically what I'm doing is lightening the thistles. Can I add some sharpening to them? And, uh, and, and do what I want to do to these and not have it affect. I do not like to sharpen like blurred background. I don't like to add clarity to that. But if I know I'm just working on the thistles, I can do all that stuff to that. So what I'm gonna do is pop up the sharpening, give it some or pop up the exposure, give it some clarity, and uh, bring some uh, contrast in by bringing the blacks back down, and uh, and then uh, that kind of goofed up the color. So that's a little too orange. So I'll pull back the orange in the color slider here. That's not the point of this tutorial. I'm not going to get too into that sharpening. I just want to show you, this is the part I want to show you, the magic part. This is something that uh, I learned a little while ago or a while back, and I use it all the time. So I got these two virtual copies. I got the one with the correct exposure here for the background and everything, and now I got my one that's got this popped out brighten thistle exposure. So what you want to do is send these over to Light or to Photoshop where you can uh, work on them with Photoshop's nice brush tools that are so much more nuanced than this uh, Lightroom brush tool. So what you do is you control click on both of them, you select both the images, the light one and the dark one. You have those open, you right click, bring up this menu, and over to edit in. This is an all important menu for me. Edit in, and go down to open as layers in Photoshop. Hit that and it'll bring them over to Photoshop as layers. This might take a second here because I'm running the screencast software. I might jump the old Asus laptop. But, oh, there it is. That new SSD that I spent two days trying to install. It's doing its thing. Or maybe something else is doing its thing. But anyways, here we go. I got my, my uh, pictures open in layers. I got the dark one on top, the light one on the bottom. I think I'm going to switch that around. Uh, dark one on the bottom, light one on top. So there you go. Um, quick blending. You guys need to know this. I don't know. Leave a note if you want to know how to do this. But uh, I don't want to bore you with the details. I'm going to hit Alt, hold down the, men, the, the, uh, the Alt key, and uh, I'm going to mask and Alt. Oh, first, I'm going to select the right thing. Uh, I'm going to mask the first one with the black mask. Bring up 
the wonderful brush tool by pushing B. And, uh, and here we go. I'm going to get the opacity set to about 30% because I want to do a really subtle uh, introduction of that lightness into this picture. So I brush in 30% up here. See how it's getting lighter. Brush it in here. And every time you lift up and click again, that adds another 30% to add up to 60% uh, opacity. You can see over here in our mask where it's starting to show through. And it's like to just add a just a touch of brightness. I don't ever like to go overboard, especially something like landscape like this, because if you overdo the Photoshop, you can see it and it looks like it looks like crap. Um, what you want to do is add just a little, and that makes your picture look alive and uh, and natural. See, this is off, and that's on. Just a tiny. See, they light up like a light bulb. Though, so this one's just just a just a little. You don't want too much, or it's gonna look fake. So that's it. That was pretty easy edit. Um, that's I. So I do a lot of times with those virtual copies over here in Lightroom. That way you can work on work on the two of them. Or another method is uh, by doing smart objects and smart object copy. That's another thing I like to do. But we'll save that for another day. It's all all because I, I just despise those brushes in Lightroom, and I love the brushes in Photoshop. So why why not use those? So that's it. Uh, save this, flatten it, and uh, and uh, save it, and uh, we're done. Or are we done? Oh yeah, it's going to tell you the rest of the story here. So uh, we'll continue back over here to Lightroom. I told you how I took these pictures of the thistle, got the one I like. But you know what? When I'm out there and the light's good like this in the early morning, I'm going to try a couple different angles. So I went and got crazy experimental here and did the silhouette one. This one looked really cool through the viewfinder, and I was like one of those where I'm like, knew the light was pretty harsh, I'm like, but maybe I can just fix it in Photoshop a little bit, or make it look the way I want to look in Photoshop, but you know what, this one is not rescuable, <laughs> and I don't even know if it's if rescuable is the right word, if it's uh, more like a, I had kind of a faint idea of what I wanted with the picture, and, and uh, I don't know how to make that happen now. So this one's pretty much a failure, but it's a, you know, it was a attempt to make a cool picture, but it didn't happen. And uh, I went over and found another thistle that was a little more in the open, but it was kind of boring. And uh, so I left that one. Then uh, I turned around and looked the other way down the hill behind me. This is a subdivision that I'm going to live in when these tutorials become like really uh, famous and. Uh, and I'm, I'm selling cameras for Fuji and Olympus, but I'll pretend I'm really not selling them. I'll just like review them and say they're good, and then I'll take money on the side and I'll buy one of these houses. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I took this picture because I wanted to show show people these deer trails. Uh, there's all these deer trails on the hill. Not the greatest picture, but I just took that. That's like a documentary picture. And then when I'm out, I like to take full advantage of everything. So I took a picture of the suburbs because uh. This is the kind of photo that sells on microstock, and I do a little microstock on the side. So I'm like, hey, hey, why not make some a little bit of cash out of this? So I took this one, hey, your standard subdivision photo. Um, someone wants to do a story on overpriced California housing or housing encroaching on the landscape, suburban sprawl or whatever. Here's your picture, um, and if you need room for copy. I took a serious sky. Look at that. You could write your caption in here. Come live in Concord, California. However, only a few rich people can live here. You'll probably live down in here. These houses are still about six hundred thousand down in here. Uh, this is about one point five million. So maybe if you work at Google or something. Anyhow, enough of my ranting about economic inequality in the Bay Area. This is supposed to be a photo tutorial. Um, that's all I got for you this time. It's the end of the story. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, I get better at this as time goes on. Check back later. I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.